Lauren, thanks for your email. Hi, Ross. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So tell me about your house. So we moved into this house um, a little over a year ago, mm -hmm. and we have lived through all the seasons in New England, and paying the bills is a little bit more expensive than we thought it would be. Sure. So we we're looking for ways to kind of help alleviate some of the costs. Sure. Yeah. And how old's the house? It was built in the 1960s. Okay, this is a very common question we get where people ask, you know, what do I do to save energy at the end of the day? You know, their fuel bills are too high and, you know, we got to get them down. So what I typically recommend is a home energy assessment. And most people think about the state-run programs or the utility-run programs, but what I'm talking about is doing a deep dive into this house by some measurements and some calculations. So we're going to take this house and actually put it into a computer model, and we can actually optimize that building and see what's going to provide the most bang for the buck for you. You interested in doing that? All right, that sounds good. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is do a visual inspection of the exterior. All right, so let's walk and talk. All right, thanks. All right. So what we are typically doing is we're starting at the top and we're making our way down. So we start with the roof, understanding, making sure that the shingles are still intact. We look at the windows and the siding to make sure there's no visual gaps. Uh, we're looking at the, the fireplace and making sure that, you know, it's in good condition. And we're also looking for water management, making sure that that water is actually being conveyed away from the building. So you can see right here, the downspout is actually conveying water right there. So we really want to get an extension on that. Now, I'd like to go inside if that's possible. Take a look at the basement. Sounds good. All right. So what I'd like to do is get a measurement of every single room in the house. Okay. So starting down here in the basement, let's get a length, width, and height measurement. So if you don't mind, take All the right. measuring tape and head that way. I can do that. All right. We're 24-2. All right, if you don't mind taking a width measurement heading that way, I'll head this sure. way. That's uh, 12 foot two and a half. All right, and then the height, 93. So the other thing we wanna get is the an understanding of the insulation in, in, the, in the house. And so it starts here in the basement by understanding what's in the walls and what's at the rim joist. Okay. okay? So we've got a concrete block here and we've got the rim joist there, and you can see that there's no insulation, no air sealing, okay? So just another data point and thing that we need to be aware of. We also have rating plates of all the equipment that are down here. So I'm gonna head over here, I'm gonna take a picture of the washing machine rating plate, which is right here, and I'm gonna take a picture of the dryer, it's an electric dryer, take a picture of that rating plate. Okay, now moving to the boiler. So this is an oil boiler. I can see the tank over there. And uh, this is how the building is heated. Um, so I take a picture as well of the rating plates on the oil boiler. So take a picture there. The burner and the service tag, which is basically going to tell us the efficiency and when that was done. And I'm also going to snap a photo of the water heater. Okay. So this happens to be a indirect water heater, which means that it is heated from the oil boiler. So this provides your space heating and your domestic hot water. Okay. Um, would you be interested though in switching from oil to another form of a fuel, maybe natural gas or something like that? Sure. Anything that saves us a little bit of money. Okay. All right. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the oil boiler. And the reason for that, because we're going to be doing a blower door test later and we've got to make sure that all the combustion appliances are turned off. Okay. All right. So let's head on upstairs and we'll take some more rating plate pictures. All right. So now that we're up on the first floor, we want to do the same exact process we did downstairs. The only difference here is that we also want to take measurements of the windows and the doors. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is get an understanding of obviously the overall window size. So in this case, it's about a four foot window, but I'm also want to take note of the glass and the exterior storm. So this is a single pane glass, but you also have an exterior storm on top of that. So what's great about that is that that storm gives you an extra layer of protection. So it protects you from additional air leakage, but it also protects you from uh, additional heat loss. Okay, the other thing that I'm taking note of is how you're actually heating the space. So here we have the fin tube baseboard. So this is where the oil boiler feeds hot water through this fin tube and that provides the heat to the space. So that's a great thing to have. The other thing we need to have an understanding of is how well is the wall insulated? How do you do that? So that's a good question. So I'd love to be able to just open up a section here and take a look at the wall framing, what's going on, but there's a little trick. So I can actually pull the cover plate off of this electrical receptacle outlet by taking this cover plate off. What it allows us to do is get a, hopefully we can get a peek behind the scenes and see on either side and below it. And so a lot of times I'll use my flashlight and get a sense. And we can see by peeking in there that there is no insulation on either sides of that electrical box. So uh, we'll take a look at some of the other electrical outlets and make sure that it's the same throughout the building, but 
probably safe to say that there isn't any insulation in the walls. Okay. Okay. The other thing we need to do is, is measure the other rooms on this floor and get rating plates of all the kitchen appliances. And we got to make sure that we close the fireplace damper. So this is our fourth bedroom and the access to the attic is through this closet right here. Okay, got it. So just like all the other rooms, let's take some measurements of the windows. They're the same as the ones downstairs and the other bedrooms. Okay. Also, they are single pane with storms, right? Just like all the other windows. And we verify the exterior insulation uh, that there's nothing in there. Okay. So let's grab a ladder and then we'll get up to the attic. So Lauren, what I'm looking for, the very first thing I come up here is I'm looking for any signs of water. Hey Ross, are you seeing any surprises? Uh, no, no surprises. I just want to make sure that we are dry and that there's no presence of anything that looks like mold or anything like that. And it looks really dry. It looks, it looks good up here. Um, the next thing I'm looking at is typically the insulation. It's about two inch of fiberglass, paper faced. Doesn't look like there's any air sealing. So it's pretty typical for 1960s construction. And then I also take a look at some of these plumbing shafts. And you can see the plumbing vent comes right up through there, but nothing's uh, nothing air sealed there. All right, Lauren, let's go set up the blower door. All right, we are set up, ready to run the blower door test, okay? So this is our pressure gauge, this is our fan, and this is our door shroud. And what it's effectively doing is we're actually gonna be depressurizing the house. So what that means is that we're gonna be pulling the house under negative pressure, and we're sending all that air from this fan outside. And we're gonna actually do that at such a rate that it's equivalent to a 20 mile per hour wind blowing on all sides of the house, all right? So the number that we're trying to shoot for is 50 pascals, all right? 50 pascals is equivalent to that 20 mile per hour wind. So we are ready, we've done our baseline, we are ready to go, okay? okay. So I'm gonna bring this on, set our pressure to 50 pascals. The fan's gonna turn on, it's gonna be a little noisy. It's totally safe to be in the house when this is running. And so we're at 46, 48, 49, 49.7, 49.8, 49.9. So right there at 50. So we're gonna leave this test running and I'm gonna go do some zonal pressure diagnostics, some testing, and then I'll come back and I'll give you the results. All right. All right. As I conduct the blower door test, I will look to see where air is being pulled. I hope to determine two things. How leaky is each room and where are the leaks coming from? The thermal imaging camera visualizes heat flow by showing the relative temperature on surfaces. The darker the color, the colder the air. So blue, purples, and blacks would be indicative of cold air coming in from outside. A manometer measures the pressure differential between rooms. It helps determine how leaky particular areas are within the house. This is called zonal pressure testing. All right, Lauren, we've taken all the measurements that we need. I'm gonna take down the blower door, head back to the office, and we can start to build our computer model. Okay. All right, is there anything you need from me? I do need electric bills and fuel bills for the last year. And then uh, if you can email those to me, and I'll see you in about a week. All right, I can do that. See you then. All righty. Good to see you again. You too. Okay. Thanks. We've got the results of the model. Good news or bad news? Got a little bit of both, okay? So I always start off with this pie chart that shows where the heat is being lost through the building. And if you see this one on the left here, the heating, it has this blue, which is represented by the walls at 32%. You have the yellow, which is the glazing or windows at 13%, but you see the big one there. Yes, what does that mean? So that 42% is through infiltration. So that's air leakage. So if we can cut it down in half, we can actually make some big differences here. So how do we do that? You know, the basement rim joist is one that we can air seal and get that sealed up nice and tight. And the attic floor, we can re-insulate and air seal that as well. Okay. Okay. Both of those would amount to about $500 in savings a year. Okay. DIY friendly, or you can hire a professional for that. The other thing to point out is the heating. Okay, so this represents how much energy you're using for oil, which is the orange, and how much you're using for electricity in the green. And this is from January to December. And you can see, obviously, you're using more oil in the winter months 
Yeah, <laughs> we know. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. So how do we how do we tackle that? One thing you could do is you could go to a natural gas option. We did some research though, and there is no natural gas in the street. Mm -hmm. The next best approach would be an air source heat pump. Okay, so mini splits, multi splits, ducted or ductless, and uh, and that type of system is going to save about a five hundred dollars or more a year. Okay, by going to that approach. The side benefit too is that they provide some cooling and dehumidification. Oh, well, that's a perk. And definitely a nice advantage there. Both of these um, are gonna come at a cost, and so you have to weigh you know, how long you're gonna be here in the house, because most of them have a payback between five and 10 years to make those changes. All right, we hope to be here for a long time with our family. Yeah, so then definitely something to consider. Uh, the other thing to think about is your appliances. The electric dryer is the one that's really old, all the rest of them mm -hmm. are updated. And uh, by changing that, you're going to be about $100 a year in oh, savings wow. by making that change. I didn't even think of that one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, last one is always smart thermostat. It's a great throw in. It's, it's a great thing to have uh, low cost, and it's going to save you some money by doing that. Okay. okay? So I'm going to leave this report with you. All right. Thank Go you through great. that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and, uh, and best of luck. All right. Thank you so much. Awesome. Lots of good information. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.